How's it going, everybody? It's Mr. Montgomery again, and I am happy to see everyone back. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Not going to really have any worksheets today because we're not in school to have all these really cool materials that we usually use. So, real quick, let's refresh on what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we had to compare two things to see which one was longer or shorter. But what if those two things were like glued to a table or something and you couldn't put them next to each other? Well, what would like, uh, like this chocolate bunny, say it was glued to the table, and and this Hershey's candle smells like yummy chocolate bars. And what if they were glued to a table? We couldn't move them. We couldn't put them next to each other to see which one was bigger. Well, we could compare them to something, like this pen. Remember how we used this pen yesterday to compare the two? And we would take the pen and put it next to the chocolate bunny. And you can see that the bunny wasn't bigger than the pen. It was actually shorter. And then we take that same pen and we go over to the Hershey candle. It smells like yummy, yummy chocolate. And we put the, that same pen up next to it. And you can see that they're like the same size. So since we have something to compare them to, we could find out that the candle is actually bigger than the chocolate bunny. Easy enough, right? So today, we are actually going to work with something called estimating. Sounds scary. Calm down. Calm down. Don't panic. It's not too bad. So estimating is like making a guess. But we don't just say, um, well, it's probably a million feet long. No, we can't do that because we know it's not going to be a million feet long. That would be silly. So we're going to take stuff like um, this penny or a bunch of pennies. I have a lot of pennies, so I'm going to use these pennies to measure. And if you have a bunch of pennies, you can do this along with me. So I'm going to use pennies to measure and make estimates. So I'm going to – let me show you. Okay. So you'll see I have a nice flat piece of paper here, and I have a bunch of pennies. And these are going to what I'm, they're going to be what I use to measure everything. So say I want to measure this pen, and I'm going to use these pennies to do it. So I'm going to put one penny next to it, so I can kind of see how much bigger the pen is. Now I'm going to make an estimate, which is an educated guess. So I'm going to use what I know. I know that this penny is smaller and that the pen is much bigger. But how many pennies will it take to fill up the entire pen? Well, my guess is going to be, let's say, five pennies. I think it's going to take five pennies to fill up alongside this pen. Let's see if I'm correct. So we have one already. There's two. And you want to make sure that they're next to each other and touching. So we have two right there. Three. Four. Five. Now was I correct? Did it take five pennies to fill up the entire pen? No. It wasn't a bad guess. But now let's see how many pennies it really takes. So we stopped at five. Here's six and seven. Now it's not going to be perfect. Maybe you have a little bit left over. But now we can say the pen is about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pennies long. Okay? So we made our, so first we just had the one penny next to it. And we made our educated guess. That means we're using our brain to think how many pennies would it really take to fill this up. And then we write our answer down. And then we measure it out with all these pennies. And now we can see if our estimate was close or maybe not so close. But it's okay. We're going to keep practicing stuff like this so we get better at it. It's not the easiest thing to start with or you know to pick up real quick and easy. But I think it's pretty fun. 
and we can do this with anything. So say we didn't want to use a pen. Maybe we're going to use something crazier, and it's going to be this, this crazy straw that I have. And I'm going to take one of these pennies, hold it up to it, and I'm going to estimate how many pennies will it take to fill up this straw. Now this time, I want you to make a guess. I want you to estimate how many pennies do you think it's going to take to fill up the entire side of this straw. You have, an, you have a number in your head? Okay, don't forget that number. Don't forget it. Okay, let's figure it out. I'm going to estimate 12. 12 pennies. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, no, I need more pennies. 10. 11. So it's about 11 pennies long. My, my estimate was pretty close. I guessed 12. So I overestimated just a, a little bit. So it was a good guess, and I was just a little bit off. So it takes 11 pennies to fill up this straw. And maybe you're thinking, but Mr. Montgomery, I don't have all those pennies lying around my house that I could use. Well, that's okay, because we can use anything to measure out and estimate. Okay, let's go back to our pen. Our pen. Maybe we don't have all these pennies, and maybe you have a bunch of cereal. We have tons of cereal. You could use uh, Cheerios. You could use uh, Chex. I have Crispix cereal, so you can use that. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different stuff you can use. Or maybe you have paper clips at home. Maybe you have a ton of paper clips. You can use those too. So what I would like us to do is estimate using this cereal. Now, it's not the same size as the penny. And that's okay. They don't have to be exactly the same. So let's try estimating with this cereal. I'm going to put it in one next to it. I'm going to estimate, hmm, I think it's going to take five pieces of cereal to get the entire length of this pen. That's my guess. That is my estimate. And how about you make an estimate also in your head? Don't forget that number. Okay. Let's figure it out. Let's test our estimate. So we have one, two, Three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's a the pen is about six pieces of cereal. I guessed five. I was pretty close, so I had a pretty good estimate. Was your estimate close? I'm sure you you were doing pretty good and you were pretty close. So our answer would be, the pen is about six pieces of cereal. And what if we wanted to do this with our straw? The straw, the crazy twirly straw that we, man, this thing can make you dizzy if it keeps rolling around. What if we want to estimate the length of the straw with our cereal? How many pieces of cereal do you think it's going to take to fill up this straw? Do you have a number? Well, I have a number. I think it's going to take, hmm, maybe nine pieces of cereal. I wonder what your guess is. I hope you, you should have a number in your head. Don't forget it. Let's figure this one out now. Now we're going to check our estimate, our guess. So we have two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the straw is about ten pieces of cereal. So 
I was pretty close. I wonder how close you were. So that's pretty much all we're doing. It's pretty fun stuff. Now that we know how to estimate and measure things using stuff we can find around the house, it is time for your assignment. So for this, you need a pencil, a paper, something to use to measure, like something you have a lot of, like these pennies I was using, or maybe checks or crisp picks, some sort of cereal, Cheerios, they work fine too. And I forgot to get something to measure. <sighs> okay, what we're gonna measure is a spoon and a fork. Everyone should have these at home. So you're going to lay down your spoon and fork and you're going to first estimate how many uh, Cheerios or whatever you're using to measure, how many are you gonna to need to make the entire length of that spoon and fork separately though. And on your paper, we need to make sure we keep this data down. So it's kind of sciencey, which makes it more fun. Okay, so on your paper, just like at school, we're going to need your name, the date, and the first thing we're going to measure, which is the fork. And below that, we're going to write the word estimation, or you can write the word estimate. They mean the same thing. Then you're going to, you know, use your knowledge the best you can to guess how many pieces of cereal or maybe pennies that it's going to take to go the entire length of that fork, which means from the one end to the other end. And remember, this is just a guess. This is your guess. There's no wrong answers. And next, we are going to use everything we have to really measure. This is the actual measurement. And here you're going to tell me how many maybe pieces of cereal took. Maybe it took five. Maybe it took seven. But after you write that number, you can't just leave the number there. You have to tell me what you used. For me, it's going to be pieces of cereal. But you can also use other stuff like um, paper clips. Or your paper could say uh, pennies. That's fine too. Next, you're going to do the same thing with the spoon. So you're going to write spoon. And underneath that, you're going to write estimate or estimation. Same thing. And you're going to tell me how many you of your cereal or coins it's going to take to go from the one end of the spoon to the other. Remember, this is your guess again. And under that, after you make your good guess, you're going to actually measure it and find out exactly how many it's going to take to go from one end to the other. And remember, it's okay if it goes over a little bit or if it doesn't quite fit it exactly. We are going to use the word about. So the closest from one end to the other. It could be about five pennies or five quarters. It doesn't have to be perfect. And below that, we have two special questions that I would love for you to answer. The first one is, which one is longer? Was it the spoon or the fork? And we need to see a whole sentence for this, a full sentence, not just the word spoon or fork. We need to say the spoon was longer or the fork was longer, or maybe they're the same size. Tell us that. We need to know. And if one was bigger, then you need to tell me by how many. Was it one penny bigger? Was it three pennies bigger? If you need a little help, you can always subtract the two numbers you got for the spoon and the fork to find out what the difference is. We need to know the difference. And difference always means subtract. Okay? So that's your assignment. And I can't wait to read your answers. And if you're in a different classroom, make sure you send it to that teacher. So make sure mom and dad take a picture of it when you're done. And we can't wait to read it. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow. And I'll give you my own estimates and measurements for the spoon and fork that I have. All right. Have fun.